Welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're so delighted that you've welcomed us into your home. We would love to hear from you, so send us an email with a question or a comment to jimandjoy at ewtn.com. And today, our guests, and we're very excited Indeed. to have Gary and Lainey Gagnon. And they're with a great ministry called Arise Worship Ministry. Birmingham. You can check them out on Facebook, Instagram, and you can visit their website. It's called AriseWorshipMinistry.com. And we're going to be talking about that beautiful ministry and uh, the way that the Holy Spirit <coughs> has orchestrated it to really um, restore, renew, rekindle the faithful people yes. of God, yes. men and women. Yeah. And, you know, early yeah. back in the day, mm -hmm. like a long time ago, I was like 17, 18, yeah. and I had a radical conversion to Jesus. And we were in a very charismatic church. Mm -hmm. and now, I'm telling you, I came straight from the street. So I came straight from the world, mm -hmm. going to this charismatic <laughs> group. I have nothing in common with any of these people. Nothing. And my flesh wanted to run out the door. <laughs> and you weren't there. You were away at college. And I went, and I just had a radical conversion. I fell madly in love with Jesus, and I wanted more of him. And I didn't know what that looked like or what it was going to be. And we got in. We had scripture. We prayed. And then we had time of worship. Now, Around I was still altar. listening to Carly yeah. Simon, the Eagles, Crosby, Stills, Nash yeah. & Young, Carol <laughs> King. And that, that was my worship of music. And here we go into this sanctuary, and we're going to get around the altar, and we're going to start singing praise songs to Jesus. Well, it was unbelievable. It was. And I just made myself available. And I went home, and you were like, what was that prayer meeting yeah. like? And I was like, well, I made sure that everything they did at the prayer meeting happened in the Bible. And everything that happened, that it was happening in the Bible. So I guess it's okay. Now you need to come with me next week. And you came with me the next week. I did, and it was the, the, just the sweetness of the Lord was there. As you said, people that we wouldn't be hanging out, older people and younger people. It was great. But... The Spirit of the Lord, the presence of the Lord was in that place. And it was good that they were gathering around an altar in the presence of, of the Lord. And, and so renewal, we were speaking about on Monday, different groups that have worked renewal in your life or, or helped to facilitate it, because only the Lord can work renewal. It's a matter of grace. And so wherever you are or whatever group you might get involved with, or maybe it's just two or three gathering together in the name of the Lord, or you're all alone, make yourself vulnerable before God. A docile before God mm. and say, Lord, I desire you. Let's renew our relationship and our intimacy. And, and you know, that's the way God works, that, that it's, it's, it's an exchange. It's an encounter. You have to say, I, I want your love. Stir up my baptism. Stir up my confirmation. C continue what I received in the Holy Eucharist. And, and as we even move towards the season of Lent, may it be a time of renewal in, in your life. So we're going to speak with the Gagnons. They're going to share more about uh, Arise Worship Ministry. And it's going to be a blessed time, May, even as you watch today, that you sense right where you are, oh, the presence, the spirit of the Lord is in my house, it's in my place, it's in my nursing home, it's in my hospital room. You'd be renewed now by the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, who wants to do infinitely more than you could ask or imagine. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. We are at home with Jim and Joy, and today our guests are Gary and Lainey Gagnon. They've been on our show before, <laughs> and Gary used to work here right at the network, and he is the great brother of Peter, who brought him a fabulous cup of coffee. He's got a he bunch of waiting. brothers. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and so Gary and Lainey are involved with a beautiful ministry called Arise Worship Ministry. It's in Birmingham. And so we want you to check them out on Facebook and Instagram, but you can go to the website. It's Arise Birmingham. No, it's yes. ariseworshipministry.com. That's right. Right? That's right. Yeah. Um, well, we're so excited to have you Thank guys. You. Why don't Thanks you first a us. little bit tell about our family, a little bit about yourselves. Okay. And, you know, you got some big anniversary coming up and a big mm -hmm. landmark birthday. <laughs> Tell our family you got, all about it. I mean, you guys go way... But they're still but, ever but, so young. But didn't you, like, have one of your first dates or first dates here at EWTN? Yes, yeah. watching Father for the Dubé. Father the Dubé? Yeah. And that was your date? Back in... Early 90s. You guys are yeah, so spiritual. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have six beautiful children, so I'm sure you tell mm -hmm. him that's yeah. where you got to go on your first date to EW10. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. It's good. Miracles right. happen that's there. That's right. That's right. We're coming up on 25 years this mm -hmm. April. Praise the Lord. So we're give thanks to God for our marriage. Yep. And we Very have blessed. six children. Um, and we're just blessed to be here. Yeah. we One of our first dates was here, so we're. We feel very at home here mm -hmm. with you guys. Wonderful, and wonderful. Well, so. you know how EWTN has been used by God's grace and mercy with Mother Angelica, who is supposed to be, well, she was always a cloistered nun, mm -hmm. but somehow, some way, she went before the whole world and continues to grow. And, and it was always about souls, she said. It's mm -hmm. about the salvation mm -hmm. of souls. If we're not doing that, we're not doing anything. It's about uh -huh. the saving of souls. And I don't know if she put it this way, but it really was about renewing mm -hmm. the church mm -hmm. and awakening. I use the term awakening. Mm -hmm. She may not have done that, but... And she had that sense of, you know, God's will for this, but also a sense of desperation, although God's never desperate, but an eagerness to bring this. And mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. a hallmark in, you know, your lives and in this Arise ministry. Mm -hmm. So just tell us a little bit how you got connected with this ministry. And then you were also involved with um, a kind of a seminar, Holy Spirit 101. So any mm -hmm. way you want to take it, sure. how did this get implanted in you and then wind up bringing okay. it back to Birmingham? Okay. Well, to start, um, Gary and I both, um, our upbringing was we both come from very strong Catholic families and yes. both of our parents were very involved in the charismatic renewal and different things growing up. Um, so we had that kind of foundation, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and then we got married and we just got busy with life and having our children. And we were always very um, committed to our church and different things, but the, the whole, um, I guess, outreach, that part mm -hmm. just kind of fell aside because our primary vocation was raising the family. Um, but in the past few years, I think both of us had experienced um, a renewal in our own faith. And we um, had been part of bringing his other brother, um, Father Daniel Gagnon, is yeah. a missionary priest in Mexico. And um, he does retreats all over the world. And he would yeah. come when he was here visiting yeah. and put on some retreats. We've well, sat it in would, on them. You've great. been to them. And the Holy Spirit would come and we would all be renewed and on fire. And then he would leave and he'd call us a few months later and he'd say, so are you still meeting? Are you still gathering? And we were like, no, mm -hmm. it just kind of, <laughs> you happens. get busy. Like you Life just, happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, we, we had been praying and we, had, we were meeting with other couples doing a study on the Holy Spirit, um, the wild goose. By, um, the, who's it? The priest uh, father, Pavanka? Father, yeah, okay. Father Dave Pavanka. <laughs> And um, around that time, we heard about Tori Harris, who um, wrote the book, Holy Spirit 101, and she had created okay. this retreat. Okay, retreat. And so we decided to go fly to Dallas um, to, to... Take the retreat and, mm -hmm. and experience what, you know, what the Holy Spirit has to offer in the gifts that he gives us at our baptism. And, you know, I was a little bit hesitant. I'm more reserved than Lainey. So, but we went along and it was, it was fun. It was very powerful, uh, taught the truths of, of the gifts, the history of it, the teachings of the church. Uh, and that was uh, attracted me about this course is that it was within the magisterium following the rites and the proper ways yeah. of doing things and proper yeah. ways of using it. So it, it, was, um, it, it was attractive to both of us because it did combine the renewing and the um, walking and activating the gifts. And what was so neat about the course is you would have a lecture and she would teach about something and then you immediately turn around and get into small groups and practice the gifts. Mm -hmm. So you're mm -hmm. activating. It's not yeah. just learning about something. You're actually learning how to do it. So I think a lot of times in the Catholic Church you learn about things and about the Lord and you might have all this head knowledge, but it's like, are you encountering him? Mm -hmm. Are you stepping mm -hmm. out in faith? And are you allowing him to fill you and to move? And so it just, yeah. we loved it. We both had a great time. We made some great connections and we came back and our um, 
pastor, Monsignor Muller at our local parish, yeah. was super supportive. He said, yeah. I will support you in this. We have a great um, pastor now. Um, our chaplain is Father Franklin. And yeah. um, so we've mm -hmm. just had a great support from the from the priesthood and um, the church. from the church. And yeah. we've just kind of just taken a step at a time and brought it back to our parish mm -hmm. now. How has it affected just the couple of Gary and Laney? How has it affected your marriage and your family? I think it, we, we pray more together now and for our family we pray more as well. And I, in fact, yeah, I, I take it to, the, to the, my kids, praying over them uh, when their needs, praying for them on the way to school and just, you know, yeah. spontaneous prayer with them and activating their their faith, yeah. increasing their faith in them. Yeah, and I think it has brought us together, together. more. Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of times, you know, he would do his his men's ministries or I would do my women's Bible studies and different things, but it really has been something that we share mm -hmm. and that we are doing together. So mm -hmm. that's been a blessing. And we, we I'm sorry, but we couldn't oh, have done this without, we have a great core team that, that uh, we helped set us up uh, here in Birmingham with your eyes. And, you know, we couldn't do it without a core team of, right. of uh, yeah. yeah, when we brought it back from Dallas, we just, on the back porch one night, we had people over um, and just kind of shared with them what we had learned. And immediately people were just like, we want to be part of this. Um, and it takes all of us working mm -hmm. together. So it's not Gary and I per se. We just happened to be the ones that said yes and flew out there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah. So well, You're using a lot of terms like charismatic renewal. Uh, which we're familiar with. And it's really interesting, you know, that renewal that was really moving very strongly continues to do so mm -hmm. in the 60s, 70s, 80s, mm -hmm. and then maybe not that as much emphasized. So some people understand what that means, some mm -hmm. don't. But you're speaking about charisms, the gifts of the Spirit, the mm -hmm. fruit of the Holy Spirit, that Holy yeah. Spirit and what He can do. And you mentioned, because for some people, I think they, they it piques their interest mm -hmm. or they moved in that stream mm -hmm. and then have ceased. Others have moved in that stream and got hurt or wounded, mm -hmm. you know, from what they thought may not have been right about it. Mm -hmm. But I think it's so important in what you're sharing is that you understand the charisms, the gifts of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, in the structure of the teaching of the mm -hmm. magisterium mm -hmm. and of the church. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. right. And which is, and, and the charisms and the gifts have always been a part of the Catholic, the universal mm -hmm. teaching mm -hmm. of the church. <clears throat> and we just don't take them and say, well, that's what it's all about. Right. We put it back into the whole. Right. Mm -hmm. But the whole without that right. is really lacking, mm -hmm. whether it's our own personal life mm -hmm. or, or the church in and of herself. And she just, she doesn't do that. Um, and, and the safety mm -hmm. of being within the church. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody speaks about, well, it's like having a fence around, and then you can send the kids out to play and to have a good time, because you know there's a fence. Mm -hmm. And the fence is 2,000 years of teaching, apostolic succession, mm -hmm. the teaching of the magisterium mm -hmm. of the church, the sacraments of the church. Mm -hmm. This is mainly led by lay people, yet you have a chaplain. Mm -hmm. you have, and and that, that allows you to be more open and vulnerable right. and free. And so exactly. I, just I was going to say them. the word freedom. Yeah. It allows that the structure and the safety and the safeguards that they teach you allows for that freedom and that openness mm -hmm. um, in powerful ways. So in a sense it's renewing, but in another sense there's nothing new here. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's Him, it's the Holy exactly. Spirit that's, that's it's been the proper, with the proper way of, of using those gifts or you know, the Holy Spirit working through you. You know, one of the safeguards is if you know, when you're praying with somebody and you ask, can I lay my hands on you. Mm -hmm. You lay your hands on their shoulder. Uh, you know, a, a priest has the authority. He can lay his hands on your head. Like I have the authority over Laney and my children. I can lay my hands over his head. So that, those are the different types of safeguards that we have when we're praying with people, you mm -hmm. know, to keep yeah. those things yeah, in mind. Because sometimes mm -hmm. in maybe past experiences, be they Catholic or not Catholic, mm -hmm. people have had a negative experience mm -hmm. and it's kind of like, is this safe? Like, right. what is going on here? Mm -hmm. right. I don't know where that is. And so then they don't want anything any, of it. Right. It's like, no, been there, got burned once, or it scared me. Right. Um, because, you know, you can't control the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. you know, and the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit comes, and but we have to welcome him. Right. And, and, and he comes and, and sometimes it's, it's, it is a feeling or it's, mm -hmm. it's a presence mm -hmm. and, you know, it's an in encounter that you have. And some, that could scare some people, you know, mm -hmm. because it takes them out of a place of control. Right. But mm -hmm. it really is a matter of surrendering mm -hmm. and just saying, Lord, always we want more of Jesus. The end game here mm -hmm. is less of us. Right. More. Uh, how, and, and to welcome him and to mm -hmm. activate that mm -hmm. and to put ourselves in a position where we can go to 
a place like this Jack, and say, I, I just want to bathe yeah. there. I think we have a short video that will help you better understand uh, what's going on with the Arise Worship Ministry. So let's, let's take a look at this. Arise Ministry was started because myself, like I'm sure all the viewers watching, I want to see revival in the Catholic faith. I want to see churches on fire. And when I started looking at the documents that our bishops were giving us, the documents of the church, about how to create revival in your parish, how to make evangelization work, all the documents say the same thing. It's we need to create environments of docility to the Holy Spirit. Lay people need to be docile to the Holy Spirit. And where does that docility need to happen? It needs to happen in the parish. So the question becomes, how do you, how do you create environments? How do you create and transform your parish to one that encourages the laity to being docile to the Holy Spirit? And so that led me on this two year research journey, which created birthed the book, Holy Spirit 101, which is a training program that we use at our parish and uh, in Birmingham for training prayer teams and training lay people to yield and be docile to the gifts of the Holy Spirit while anchored in the teachings of the church. And if people want to learn more about the book or even our night of healing, similar to what goes on in Birmingham, you can visit our website at www.ariseworshipministry.com. It's got the information on the book. It's got information on our virtual e-course that you can take. And if you're interested in bringing us out to do a training at your parish, you can contact us via the website to learn more. And we'd be happy to answer any and all of your questions. Thanks so much. How do we move? I'm hearing a lot about the 101 kind of retreat and learning what to do, what not to do in prayer, the boundaries. Mm -hmm. How do we get from there to the Arise Worship Time or healing nights or whatever it is? How does mm -hmm. one relate to the other? How did, how did it develop? Okay. Well, after we, um, we came back from Dallas and we immediately said, we want to do this here in Birmingham. So we quickly put together Holy Spirit 101 ourselves and then um, we Primarily right now we do our monthly nights of healing. So once a month we gather at our parish um, and we have the main components are we have a time of praise and worship with music ministry. Mm -hmm. We have adoration. So we're, we're praise and worshiping in the presence of our Lord. Um, we have a, a time set apart for confessions on one side of the, the yeah. church. And on the other side we have prayer teams where Laity, you know, we have different prayer teams that have made up of just regular people who have been trained um, just to come alongside and pray with people because I think that has been the thing that most people really, I guess Catholics are not used to praying with mm -hmm. one another. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, that's the thing that we see the most fruit, fruit from um, because people, I mean, you'll see grown men weeping, just having other people take Care. the time mm -hmm. to hear. Mm -hmm. um, and so like you were saying, it doesn't replace the liturgical, it doesn't replace mm -hmm. mass or any of that, but it comes alongside with it. Mm -hmm. So it's not an either or, it's a both and. Right. And so we, um, we pray with people. Um, and then at the end of the night, we have benediction and it's just a fellowship time. And people just, um, I think people just, I, there's an intimacy in praying with one mm -hmm. another, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but they just leave saying, I felt so connected, even closer than some of my closest friends. We have this immediate connection because it's in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so he's, he's brought about some Who great attends, fruit. Gary, and men, women, who's we have, coming? We have all ages. We have uh, high school kids to young kids to college kids. Um, I think it provides an atmosphere. You know, we, we have the sacrament of confession for the healing of the spiritual healing there. And then we have our Lord on the altar. And we know when our Lord's there, his mother's there with him. Amen. And so we stress Mary, you know, we always start off with somebody who gives their testimony of what, how the Holy Spirit, how the, uh, have changed in their lives. Yeah. And then, you know, we have, we're coming up, what, next, probably next month doing a, a mission with, with the college students here in town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we were, we were invited to do so. But. Is yes. the Eucharist celebrated or is it? No, it's, it's just an adoration no, okay. and benediction. We end yeah. the night with benediction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, you know, we have a, a speaker that comes and gives their testimony and then we praise and worship, and then we proceed in with the Blessed Sacrament, yeah. and we have adoration, yeah. and then we close the night. During the adoration, we have the two ministries, mm -hmm. and then we close the night with benediction. Yeah. And, and it's just a monthly meeting, right? right? Mm -hmm. And I think when you were um, just talking about the testimony, too, we've also started um, seeing the importance of people sharing their testimonies, mm -hmm. even not being one of our speakers, but just at the beginning of the night, doing a five-minute quick mm -hmm. testimony of mm -hmm. what... Um, 
God has done in their life and the power, you know, the scriptures say that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the power of our testimony. Amen. And not only are we overcoming darkness by speaking yeah. of the good things God has done, yeah. but it also increases the faith of everyone there mm -hmm. in the room mm -hmm. and then they start. Right. Yes. You know. Yes. And, so, and, and the okay. feeling is if Jesus did that for them, he could do that for exactly. me. Mm -hmm. Well, exactly. thank you for opening this up to us. We're going to continue this tomorrow and learn more about moving in the Holy Spirit, these nights of healing, and what people can expect if they participate or want to be a servant minister within that ministry. We'll be right back. There's plenty more to come, so please don't go away. Welcome back. We're at home with Jim and Joy, and now we have Father John Paul with us. Father, I have been to Arise, and I have seen you at Arise. So what do you think of all the things that Lainey and Gary were sharing? Well, they are good friends of mine, and uh, mm -hmm. Lainey texted me uh, earlier last week and said, would you do a little testimony? Uh, does it have to be long? Can you tape it? I said, I will be there in the flesh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't have to send out any tes testimony on my cell phone. Um, I'll be there to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, it's it, Father Mark and I go. Uh, Father Mark goes a little bit more than I do because mm -hmm. uh, of scheduling uh, purposes. Um, it, it's a great ministry to be involved in. And I guess I'd like to say that I think a lot of people, when they think about the charisms and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, first of all, they're, they're, I mean, I could, there's yeah. a whole show we can go into that. Right. Um, but when you think about charisms, that word, I think a lot of people think of uh, the stigmata or, um, you, know, you know, different things that the Lord has given people. But charisms in the church are really ordinary. There are extraordinary charisms like the stigmata. But charisms, I think many people don't really ask the Lord in prayer, Lord, what are the charisms mm -hmm. that you've given me. Yeah. What have you given me as a charism, as a gift of the Holy Spirit that you want me to share with others? Charism is a gift for the upbuilding of the body of the church. So, so I think that people watching should ask the Lord in prayer, Lord, what is it that you have, have given me to share yeah. with other people to build the church up? Mm -hmm. And there are so many. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and there, when we were life in the spirit, it's helpful in that it, you know, seminar. that little seminar, it helps you. Uh, you, we, you take a spiritual gift test to find out what your spiritual gifts are to say, oh, this helps identify. Mm -hmm. And usually the natural gifts mm -hmm. that the Lord just blesses with his presence and spirit. Well, her choice mm -hmm. is a ministry. It's, it's, I would, I would say that's a real charism, you know, to work in pro-life work. Uh, to reach out to men and women who are struggling with that, you know, mm -hmm. It's crisis. a real mercy ministry. Yeah, it mm -hmm. is a mercy. It, mm -hmm. It's a corporal and spiritual work mm -hmm. of mercy, what mm -hmm. you do. Yeah. So that's, a, I believe that's a real charism that the yeah. Lord has given you. And there are times you need the word of knowledge. You need courage. Sure. You need faith. You need, yep. prophetic and, word, and prophetic healing. word, hearing, healing. and courage. I mean, all these beautiful gifts that you move in the power of the Holy Spirit. And you're always listening. God, mm -hmm. what do you have me to say to this As client? a priest, I see... The Spirit working in the midst of that ministry, your ministry, Arise ministry, and it just encourages me to, to, to be a part of that. I want to be a part of the, the work of the Holy Spirit. Father, close us in a prayer with a blessing, please. Sure. Family, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and may He turn His face to you and be merciful to you. May He show you His kindness and give you His peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you. At this difficult time in history, health-wise, and upheaval, and secularism, and every sort of thing, we should expect a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon His church, a great work of renewal at this mm. hour. 
and outpouring of gifts of the Holy Spirit upon believers and non-believers, that they would be awakened and come alive and be in awe of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God is more willing to give than we are to receive from him. Ask and receive that your joy may be full. Keep it on EWTN. You're always at home with Jim and with joy. Bye now.